Well, good morning. Good morning. It's good to see all of you. And we come over about 8.30 and it was cold and the grass was wet. We thought, well, we better just come over and stay inside. And if we keep getting rain, that's fine. We could use it right now. Oh, the big question about masks. Uh, it was kind of interesting. We were using last year's temp, uh, services for a template and it said, please wear masks. And today it's just now with all the changes, we're just uh, it's asking people to consider, just be considerate of others. Uh, we're still suggesting distancing. At the same time, we're going to have coffee after fellowship. So if you wish, please come down and join us for coffee and some bars and, and as we get over this hump. Uh, good hope. I, I failed to put in our, our announcements from Saint jo or from Parish Three. Good Hope's website is up. Be sure to check it out. The offering pl bucket plates, as always, they're in the back with uh, your church name on it. VBS at Good Hope, and for the community of Titanka is June 6th through June 10. And uh, there will be more information in the calendars and bulletins. It will be from 5.30 to 8.30, preschool to 6th grade, and volunteers are needed. Also then, I did bring up from uh, Parish 3, the St. John's quilters are asking for donations of old sheets or blankets to use for quilting. And then uh, Memorial Day services will be at, at uh, Bingham Cemetery on Monday the 31st. So uh, I know some places are not having Memorial Day services, but uh, tight, uh, Woden area is having one at Bingham Secretary, uh, Secretary, Cemetery. Um, worship ch next week will be at St. John's with Holy Communion, and that will be indoors. We decided it was best to have communion services indoors. And then be sure to watch. We had to change the schedule a little bit. Uh, on May 30th, we'll come back to Good Hope, and then we'll do Emmanuel the following week. Uh, there is, uh, because of Bible school, Good Hope will be decorated and can't really host the service. So May 30th, we will be back here at Good Hope. Are there any other announcements or do I have it all? Should I pass a test and see if you got it? Yeah, like confirmation kids. When I offer, offer that, they never say thank you. I invite you to please rise and join me in the bulletin. We can be, continue with confession and absolution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us now confess our sins to our gracious God. Lord of heaven and earth, we humbly confess our sinfulness and our sins to you. We beg for your forgiveness and ask for your love. Grant us the spirit of repentance and reconciliation with those from whom we are estranged and who are separated from us, that with renewed hearts and lives we may continue our earthly journeys to your heavenly courts. God has promised forgiveness to those who repentantly turn to him. As his servant, I declare to you the forgiveness of your sins. May the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit abide with you always. Our gathering hymn, Beautiful Savior, and the number is up on the board if you would like to read it from the hymnal. Beautiful Savior.
The Lord be with you. Let us join together with the prayer of the day. Almighty God, your blessed Son, our Savior Christ Jesus, ascended far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Mercifully give us faith to trust that as he promised, he abides with us on earth to the end of time, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with the reading of the lesson. The verses 18 through 20 that are not included in these are all about how Judas died. They get kind of gory, but uh, we are, the focus here is on the choosing of Matthias. The first reading in the seventh Sunday of Easter comes from Acts chapter 1, verses 15 through 17 and 21 through 26. In the days between Jesus' ascension and Pentecost, Peter oversees the process whereby one of the members of the community of believers is chosen to be the twelfth apostle, and in order to fill the vacancy created by Judas's treachery and death. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together the crowd numbered about 120 persons, and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us, and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two. Joseph called Barsabas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry, an apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. Here ends the first reading. Our psalm today is Psalm 1. Will the congregation please read the dark and in print? who have not walked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they They are like trees planted by streams of water, but leaves that do not wither. It is not so with the wicked. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes. Nor the sinner comes the Lord righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. But the way of the wicked shall be destroyed. Our second reading comes from 1 John chapter 5, verses 9 through 13. God has borne witness to the gift of eternal life in Jesus Christ. Whoever believes in the Son of God believes in the witness of God and has promise of eternal life. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater, for this is the testimony of God, that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. Here ends the second reading. Please rise for the reading of the Gospel. Our Gospel reading for today is recorded in John chapter 17, beginning with verse 6. These words, we go back to Monday, Thursday. They, Jesus is praying these words before he is betrayed and goes to the cross. 
And in this reading, then, the church, that is us, we hear Jesus' words on the night before his death, his prayer for his disciples, and for all who would believe in him through their words. Jesus prayed, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me in the world. They are yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine. And I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have, I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. Here ends the reading of the gospel lesson for this day. Please be seated. <coughs> well, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father, and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A man tells of his grandmother. She was one of these energetic little ladies. And was, uh, while his grandfather was rather slow and deliberate. Well, one night they were awakened by a loud noise out in the chicken house. And so Grandma, with all of her energy, dressed only in her nightie and her slippers, she runs out as quick as she can to the, to the uh, chicken house and she sees a big snake. And she didn't have anything with her to fight the snake, so she pinned it down with her foot. And there she stood, waiting for Grandpa. And waiting, and waiting. And finally, 15 minutes later, Grandpa shows up. Remember, she's in just her nightie and her slippers. Grandpa shows up, fully dressed, every button in place. He even took time to put his watch uh, that's on a chain in his pocket. And he gets there and he says cheerfully to his rather enraged wife, Well, if I had known you had him, I would have taken my time. <laughs> well, some may find it harder to wait than others. But all of us have a hard time at being willing to wait. It seems like life with God involves a lot of waiting. While Jesus was staying with the disciples, he gave them orders not to leave Jerusalem. They were to wait there for the promise of the Father. Now to gain some, uh, uh, some perspective on this setting and where this is taking place, is if you're watching the news at all and some of the stuff that's going on in Israel and Palestine and, and the almost war and the shooting of all the rockets, we're talking about that very same place. We're talking about the Jerusalem of today is also the Jerusalem of the Bible. And the people there today, they're waiting in fear. I, don't, I didn't read about the Palestinians or the Hamas, but I read about the Israelites and that it's an Israeli law that all homes and apartments have to have a safe room. It's got a lot of concrete and reinforcing around so that when the sirens go off, 
that they don't have time to go down to the bomb shelters. They have a safe place in their home. And it's interesting to read because they're being given ideas for waiting, especially for small children. If you have small children, be sure you have things for them to do while you wait for the all clear. It also went on to say that the teenagers are a real problem because they want to go outside and see what's going on and take pictures with their cell phones. Well, the disciples were not waiting in fear. They are waiting with hope and anticipation. Outside of Jerusalem, on the Mount of Olives, they saw Jesus ascend into heaven. That's why we don't have the large candle lit today, because Ascension Day was Thursday, and we take that light, uh, turn that light off, or do not light that candle, because Jesus has ascended into heaven. Jesus has done the work that he has come to do. He was born, he did his three years of ministry, he died on the cross, he rose again, he appeared to many hundreds of people, and now that, all of that that he has been sent to do is completed. And he's being now returned to heaven. And the disciples are to wait because God has something more that's going to happen. God has more business to do with things. And one of the things that, they, that Jesus says is, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will be witnesses to the resurrection, to everyone. And then with Jesus back in heaven, he sits at the right hand of the Father with all of the glory of God. And so they do as Jesus told them to do. They return to Jerusalem to wait. But waiting, and the word that's used here, sometimes we think of waiting as sitting back in my easy chair, watching television and falling asleep. And that a, a, can be kind of a nice way of waiting. But the word used here means it's active. And their waiting was something that was done with a lot of activity. So what do they do while they're waiting? The first thing they do is they pray. They spend a lot of time in prayer. And that raises the question for us as we wait. How often do we use that waiting time to pray? As we wait for God to act in the smallest things in our lives to the big things like sickness and death. That waiting is miserable. But we have that gift of prayer. And if you do not know what to pray, then turn to the Psalms. You can pray the Psalms. There's 150 of them that will say everything from how, how miserable I am to praising God. And then try saying the Lord's Prayer. And something I've learned from the, the Roman Catholic Church and my brothers and sisters there, and I have family there, is to say the Lord's Prayer over and over again. How often do we just say the Lord's Prayer and say, well, I did that. But what if we said it and then go back and set it again and think about every word and simply meditate it on God as we said that prayer over and over again. Waiting is an opportunity for prayer. The second action that takes place during this waiting is the choosing of someone to take the place of Judas. In the midst of the praying, Peter, who seems to be the leader of the apostles, he stood up and he announced to everyone that someone needed to take the place of Judas. Now why did they need somebody? Why couldn't they just say, well, there's 11 of us left, that works. Why do we have to have 12? We can do a lot of study on that, but basically the, the, the passages that we're looking at is that 12 is an important number in the history of Israel. The fact that Jesus chose 12. He had to have 12. And so they decided that had to be matched. There were 12 patriarchs. That is, if you remember some of your Bible history, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob's name becomes Israel. He has 12 sons. And those 12 sons then form the 12 tribes of Israel. So 12 becomes very important as we maintain that consistency. The other thing is, not just anyone could be an apostle. 
He had to have been there from the very beginning, somehow back at the time of John the Baptist to the time of witnessing the resurrection, that he was there as a part of it. So if you remember, there are many disciples. So we need someone who meets those qualifications. And so they begin to, as their prayers, two names are raised up. Now they do not do like we often do in, as we look for council members. We often use the mirror test. I know I've referred to that before. We hold the mirror under somebody's nose and if they're breathing, they qualify to be on council. They're not doing that. This person has to meet these qualifications in order to be an apostle now, one who was sent. And so two names are lifted up. We don't know anything about them other than they meet the qualifications. Joseph called Barabbas, and, Jew, and uh, he's also known as Justice, and Matthias. And so they cast lots. And keep in mind, all of this is being done with prayer. When I was uh, younger, in my home congregation, we had two congregations, and sadly at the time we didn't agree with very much. There was a lot of tension. And the bishop was out as we were voting on uh, two names of somebody to be our, our pastor. And we prayed 13 times that night. I remember it very well. We'd lift up the name and we'd vote. This congregation voted for this pastor. This congregation voted for that pastor. We'd count the votes. And the bishop would say, we've got to pray some more. And we'd do it again. And we got to pray some more. Prayer is very important as we make those decisions. And it serves as a good example for us as Christians today. Well, the casting lots involves prayer. It might have been simply pulling, uh, drawing the short straw. It could have been casting dice. They don't really know exactly what it was. But whatever the case, as it was part of prayer, they believed that God was working through this to choose that person. And the lot fell on Matthias. Now again, we want to keep in mind, we have to think about this. Being chosen to be an apostle is not necessarily a great honor. He is being chosen to be sent out. And to be chosen is to be a task of witnessing to the resurrection. Of taking the good news to the ends of the earth. And the thing is now, after this, we hear nothing more about Matthias. There's no more mention of him at all in the Bible. However, we do have writings of those who followed the apostles, people who were taught by the apostles. And there are a variety of explanations of where Matthias went, where he did this ministry, but all of them agree that he was martyred, that he was killed for his faith. And as for the other one, Joseph, called Barsabbas, <clears throat> we hear nothing more of him. But then all of the other disciples, they said there were about 120 there, all of the other disciples, they're nameless. They're working in the kingdom of God. They're, they're being the presence of Jesus in people's lives as they care for them, and they remain nameless. It's a humble type of thing. And Joseph must simply have gone back to being in that group of people of serving. And now they wait, obeying Jesus' command to remain in Jerusalem. And they wait with hope and anticipation, and they wait with prayer. What does God have planned now? What is God going to do now? They wait, and we wait. We wait for the day when Jesus will return in the same manner he ascended into heaven. But until that time, we wait with hope and anticipation that is beyond this world. We wait with anticipation because Jesus has risen from the dead. And while we wait, we work in the kingdom of God. Next week is Pentecost. I encourage you to wear red. Uh, next week is Pentecost and the celebration of the coming of the Holy Spirit that gives us the strength, the courage, the faith, the guidance to go out with the message to the whole world. But while we wait, we work in the kingdom of God. 
And while we wait, we pray, trusting God to guide us. And we join the apostles, the disciples, it describes it a little bit more in Luke, as they gathered together and they sang hymns and worshiped God. Our task is simply tell others about the risen Jesus Christ. That's what we do while we wait. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which is beyond all of our human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Our hymn of the day is Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, verses 1 through 3. confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. That is on page 65 if you wish to read it. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. 
He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let us join together in prayer. <coughs> You promised, O oh Lord, not to abandon your disciples, but to guard, guide, and lead them. Send us your Holy Spirit to guard us in your truth, to guide us through your word, and lead us to fulfill the mission you have entrusted to us. Lord, in your mercy. As you added Matthias to the company of the apostles, Bring many to join us as part of your family of faith, as partners in the gospel, and to be witnesses with us to the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the whole Christian church on earth, that we may use our waiting time to tell others that Jesus has risen from the dead. We continue our prayers for Bishop Eaton and Bishop Hallis and all Christian leaders that they will faithfully lead us, perhaps in the same manner that Peter led the rest of the apostles. Lord, in your mercy, <clears throat> help us to live together in unity and love, and so bring joy to your heart and glory to your name. Today we ask you to be with Matthew Schmidt, Tomasa Cook, Mary Tryon, Pam Schmidt, all of our folks who are in the nursing homes. And then there are those that we lift up from our hearts who have a need for your special healing and grace. Let your love be their strength and their power and use us to bring your comfort and hope to all who suffer or are in need. Lord, in your mercy, <clears throat> guard and guide our own nation and all who make and administer and judge our laws. Bring peace to the nations, freedom to the captives, and justice to the persecuted. Lord, in your mercy, here. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all, all our prayers and everyone for whom we have prayed, even our own selves. Hear and answer us for the sake of Jesus, our great high priest, who even now stands before the throne of grace on our behalf. To you be glory, honor, praise, and thanksgiving, now and always. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shot be great. I forgot it. I'm sorry. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with all of his favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I remind you, please come downstairs for coffee and some bars following the service. And uh, we thank you to those who are preparing that. We continue with our sending hymn to Church's One Foundation. And the number is on the board if you'd rather use the hymnal. <laughs>
peace. Tell the world that Christ has risen. Amen. Amen.